everyone. Welcome uh, to Ken Bostrom Ministries. We are so glad that you're with us today. This is the day the Lord hath made, Mary. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be <laughs> glad in it. Are you ready for today? I'm ready. Well, I'm ready for today. I'm ready to hear what the Lord has for us today. Yes. You yeah. know, we have gone, uh, we've talked about uh, four steps to peace with God. Four steps to peace with God. And the first step is God, God has a purpose. Amen. Remember we talked about He's a that. Good God. Oh, if He's you a miss good these programs, God. go back and listen to those programs and, and find out what we talked about, about God's purpose. He has a plan and a purpose. Yes, he he has hope for you. And it's just, uh, that's just awesome. And, and he's a loving God. Uh, step two, we talked about our problem of man. It's, it's sin and separation from God. And uh, it's time to get back to God and do it God's way. Amen. Well, today, we're going to be talking about step uh, three. And we're going to try to get in that step four also. <laughs> but step three is God's remedy. And that remedy cross. is the cross. Yeah. And uh, in uh, Romans chapter five, verse six, uh, Christ in our place. It says, for when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You know, when I was ungodly, God died for me. Jesus died mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. When I was ungodly, yeah. not, I was saying, I was, I was living, uh, you know, in bars and all these kinds of things. You Just tried to do good. I mean, yeah. we went to church every Sunday. Yeah, separated from God. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, but uh, Christ died for the ungodly. And verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. Ain't nobody going to hardly die for anybody else, you know. But in verse 8 it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. So you're, if you're separated from God right now, remember that this is Christ died for you sitting in that bar, sitting there doing your own thing in life. Christ died for us. And verse 9 says, much more than having now been justified by his blood. And Mary, you teach on the blood of Jesus a lot. Next and, week, I'm oh, going to get next into week, it. They're gonna, next week. You've got to come next, next week, week. And, and listen to this program yeah. because you're going to be talking about the blood of Jesus. I'll have my cluster here. You know, there's a lot of people today, Mary, that don't talk about the blood. In I churches, know. they don't talk about the blood of Jesus. That's why there's no life there. There's no life there because life's in the blood. That's it. Right. And it says, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Thank God for Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Amen. You know, we talked about that sin and separation, but it took the cross. I know. It took Jesus yeah. died on the cross. If you go and, uh, you know, in the Gospels, like, like in the book of Matt, Matthew, uh, in verse, uh, or chapter 27, verse 25, uh, and, uh, and all the way down to verse 56, Jesus dies on the cross. You don't need a couple robbers, you know, on, the, on both sides of him. And, uh, but and let me just read this quickly. It says in uh, verse 20, uh, I mean 27, verse 32, Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by the name, uh, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of the skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. Oh, wow. But when he had tasted, he would not drink it. That's right. Uh, then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up over his head the accusation writ written uh, against him, this is uh, Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now the two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by blaspheming him, wagging their heads. You imagine? Here's a guy, you know, he's King of the Jews, you know. Uh, and saying, you who destroy the temple, build it up in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. You know, he could have. He could have done anything. He could have ca called 10,000 angels. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's one a, angel could have killed him. Son of God, he yeah. could do whatever he wanted yeah. to, but he didn't. But he didn't because God so loved the world. Oh, God. God loved you, and God loved me, and God loved you. You did it, Mary. You brought me back to John three sixteen, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for God so loved the world, the sinner, mm -hmm. for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, 
that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Amen. If you want everlasting life in heaven with Jesus, you've got to accept him. Yeah. And we're going to talk about connecting with Jesus. Uh, likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and elders and said, he saves others himself, he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will, he will have him. He said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. You know, when you accept Jesus, people are going to mock you. Yeah. People are going to make fun of you if you talk about Jesus. You know, many people talk about God. But you know, the other, I got to share this right quickly. The other night I happened to watch the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I am a Vikings fan, by the way. And uh, I believe that was a miracle shot. And uh, it was totally awesome. But the quarterback, at the, when he was being interviewed at the end of the game, the one thing he gave credit to was to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And uh, the uh, receiver, he gave credit to God. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of people know God. And mm -hmm. God, is, God is our Father. He's our Heavenly Father. You know, people but, don't have a problem with you saying God. Right. But I tell you what, you bring the name of Jesus in there, yes. that's when yeah. every knee must bow. And there's demons out there that do not want to bow to the name of Jesus. Right. But, you know, uh, back 30, uh, 35 What's years What's the ago, name that we're saved by? Jesus, yeah. 35 years ago, you know, I went to the cross. Mm -hmm. 35 years ago, you went to the cross. There, everybody has to go to the cross to come to the, to come to the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's what it's all about. So I continue, you know, go into the end of the Gospels and start reading about, because we don't have time on the program today to, to go through everything. Yeah. But Jesus did die on the cross. He shed his blood for you. We take communion, yeah. in fact, today. Uh, you know, uh, about his broken body and, and the blood of Jesus. We take Amen. communion and examine ourselves to make sure that we're in the faith and that we're loving our Lord. You Amen. know, there, there, was, um, there was, it was somebody that had given their testimony and, and, and somebody came up to him afterwards and, and said, man, you were really a sinner. <laughs> you were, you know. That was Mike Warnke years back, back in South yes. Dakota, we remember. But they were both going to hell. Yeah, he said, yeah, but he said, you know, uh, I was a bad sinner, but we're both going to the same hell. Yeah, so even good exactly. people, even good people go to hell. Good people. You see, it's all about connecting with the it's Lord. It's all about, yeah. But Mary, you know, there's a response that we have in step four. The step four, it's our response is to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord, and, you know, as our Savior, and then make him Lord over our lives. It's not yeah. just salvation, but then it starts to living a life as a Christian. A Christ, what is a Christian? How do you define a Christian? A Christian is really someone that's Christ-like. Isn't that a Christian? Follow you know, sometimes you, you say to people, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Well, tell me about it. Uh, well, I go to church every Sunday or this kind of thing. You know, just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, so we have to respond to what the Lord did on the cross. Exactly. Amen. Isn't that right? But, and you I, know, a lot of people just stop at the cross. And then they go back to their own lives. Yeah. You, you can't stop at the cross and go back to your own lives because what we do at the cross determines where we're going to spend eternity. But what we do after the cross yeah. will determine how we spend eternity, our rewards. Yeah. Because there is, I, you know, after the cross, then we live for him. We, we, in him, we live yeah. and we move and we have our very being. If all it was was Jesus wants us to get saved and go to heaven, he might as well kill us after we're, we're born again. But no, we are to rule and reign with him on this earth. Yeah. We're seated, we are seated in heavenly places with him. Yeah, that's right. You know, so a lot of people stop at the cross, but there is much He's more risen. after. He, he was, is three days, risen. Three days later, what happened? He wasn't in the tomb anymore. Mm -hmm. He was gone. He had risen. Exactly. There's a little boy that was raised uh, to understand that he's risen. And they, they, went to this, uh, they went to this church for, I don't remember if it was a wedding or what it was. And it was one of those churches that they have Jesus hanging there on the cross. And he looked up there and he started crying and screaming, Mommy, Daddy, uh, Jesus is dead in this church. It was a dead church. Yeah. But he'd never seen Jesus hanging on the cross. 
Yeah. You know, because he's not there anymore. That's right. He's risen. He is you know. risen. The cross is very essential in a person's life. Absolutely. Because that's you can't you, come to the Father unless you, can't you go come through. To, you got to go through the cross yeah. to get to the to, to exactly the, to, to the Father. Uh, you know, and and so he's risen. Hallelujah. You know, and then after that, uh, we've been commissioned. When you get born again, you get commissioned. Mm -hmm. And and I uh, like this. I'm going to take you over to uh, Mark chapter. Uh, uh, is it? You get over here. I don't know. This is the Great Commission. Oh, I like we that. We have been commissioned yeah. to do something for the Lord. Yep. And let me share, and people Absolutely. don't realize this, but, yeah. you know, I don't know what to do for the Lord. Well, let me share with you, uh, uh, if I can get into Mark here. But this, this, is, uh, this is so important. Here it is right here. It says in, in Mark uh, chapter uh, 16, it says, uh, verse 14, later he appeared to the eleven. As he, he came off the cross, he appeared to them in the, at, the, in, at the eleven, as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Yeah, they they, they get after Thomas because he he had unbelief, but he rebuked them all. Yeah, he rebuked the whole yeah. works here, unbelief and heart, and that's that's where we got to be very careful today. Mm -hmm. Is is unbelief? Well, I don't believe that. Yeah. You well, know, you're believing something. You believe in what the devil tells you, it's and you act on it. Or God, or but we God. have to act on what the Lord tells us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who and told you? Who told you who you were told naked? Me, yeah. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, now this is in red, this is Jesus speaking. He says, go, and they always say, what part of go don't you understand? Yeah. You know, what part of, go to Texas. Mm -hmm. Go from Minnesota to Texas. Mm -hmm. We still got to get some of our testimony here, Mary. <laughs> go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature all over the world. I think about Chris Michaels going all over the world to preach mm -hmm. the gospel. Mm -hmm. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Boy, if you don't believe, you're going to be condemned. Come on. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Well, is tongues of today? That's, uh, that's all passed away. Who said it's passed away? It, it's right here in the exactly. great. It's in the Great Commission. It's spoken exactly. by Jesus yep. that they will speak with new tongues. Absolutely. If you go back to the Book of Acts and uh, and Acts one says, "You shall receive power when the Holy yep. Spirit comes upon you. You shall you shall receive power." Yeah. So the power's in this thing. He said, yeah. "Don't go, don't go out there preaching. Don't leave Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high." I think Jesus was going, "Please don't, I don't, don't leave this way. <laughs> Unbelief and hardness of heart. No, you need power. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you are endued with power from on high." And look what happened in, in, in Acts two four. I mean, they they started, man, they just uh, 120 of them just started. They all spoke in tongues up there. Peter. Peter, the one with peppermint foot, you know, he's just sort of always doing something wrong. And yeah. Peter preached like a man out of another world. There's oh, no yeah. better sermon in the whole Bible than Peter. Peter, who would have expected that out of Peter? Yeah. 3,000 religious Jews were, were saved. Yeah, and you know, in uh, the book of uh, Acts, here Peter, he had to straighten them out a little bit, you know, after uh, some were saying, well, they were saying, well, he's speaking in our language, our, you know, all this kind of stuff, like, like they were drunk. Mm -hmm. At 9 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, they were drunk. Mm -hmm. But uh, Peter, standing up with them in the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed to my words. For these are not drunk, speaking in this, as you suppose. Because, see, there's that, a drunk is somebody that's been on alcohol or mm -hmm. whatever. Since it is only the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in these last days. Are we in the last days? We're in Says the last God, days. that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's all of us. Yes. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Yes. Now, when it comes to that, I wonder uh, what's a young man, what's an old man. Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm still, I'm still dreaming, hallelujah. I'm, I'm still seeing visions, glory to God. And my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. God wants to pour his spirit out in he us. He does, amen. You know, I think about uh, our good friend, Pam Berry. Uh, she oh, has these Holy Ghost meetings. And, uh, I love Pam we, We've been in those, and uh, Pam is such a blessing. Mary. Yes. She's, she's part of this ministry. She is. She's, she's, she's yes. a precious, precious woman of God. Yes. And I'll tell you, 
bringing you into the spirit and the yeah. presence of the Lord. Uh, There's nothing wonderful. like the presence of the Lord. If you have never experienced the presence of the Lord, you need to. Find a church, find, find mm -hmm. a, a cell group, sign a home group, find a place where the spirit is just Connect flowing. with believers. Connect with believers. You know, I remember going to a church up in Dallas. Remember that? We walked into that church and it was over with. The meeting had been over with. We, we got there real late. And we opened the door and you could just feel the glory. Oh, The glory my cloud goodness. in that place. I mean, it was just so, the presence yeah. of the Lord was so powerful. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. And listen to this. And they shall prosper. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. Wonders in heaven. Wow. Don't you teach on signs in the signs heavens? Signs in Man. the heavens. Yeah. yeah, that'd be powerful. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you need to connect with the Lord. And, uh, you know, how do I connect with the Lord? If you go to Romans uh, uh, chapter 10, and I want to show you how, just, this is how you do it, connect. Well, I've known Jesus all my life, you know, but have you really done this? It says, but what does he say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. Faith, which, uh, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth, and we pray this at the end of it, we give people an opportunity to come to Jesus. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Saved. Delivered. What do you mean to be? What is it like to be saved? Yes. It's making a confession. Mm -hmm. It's believing in your heart, mm -hmm. not with unbelief and hardness of heart that we just saw back here. Right. Amen. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. Confession. You got to confess it. Yeah. And just like that lady saying to us, coming to her home, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you got to speak the word of God. Out. Knowledge comes by reading. Yeah. Knowledge comes by reading, and that's part of renewing your mind. But faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, you've got to listen to uh, what they used to call uh, cassette play, you know, cassettes, and oh, now they got CDs, goodness. and now they got USBs, now they got, you just go in and tune into anything. Our cassettes ran constantly when we first got born again. We could not get enough. We right. were so hungry. Yeah. So you hungry. need to find some good faith teachings and, and click on to it and start. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in John, or excuse me, uh, James 1.22, to be a doer of the word, not yeah. just a hearer only, but you have to, you know, what you hear, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe this, and I've, I've said this, and I put it on Facebook, that we are responsible. When, we're, when we go to church or we hear the word of God, we're responsible for what we hear. Yes, yeah. See, you know, sometimes I pastor daughter used to say, our pastor down there in Galveston, you just slip, you know, grease on all four sides and just slip right out of here. But it don't work that way. <laughs> you're going to have, you're going to have to glory in some tribulations. You're going to have to count things all joy at times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Whoever calls. Whoever calls upon whoever the name of the Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the you Lord. You mean that the murderers and the rapists and all of them can call upon the name of the Lord? You know, Mary, there's so many uh, people in prison and they're captive. They, mm -hmm. they can't, you know, just do what they want to do. But, you know, there they are. They're never, you, if you have Jesus Christ, you're never alone. Mm -hmm. You're never alone. It's like people say, well, I lost my job. I say, you got a job. If you're a Christian, you've got a job. You're an authorized representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our job. That's our assignment. That's, yeah. That should be number one. Job is, you know, if you get your priorities right in life, that's kind of down towards the, the bottom there. Amen? Hallelujah. So the cross is so important. Mm -hmm. Our response, uh, just to recap a little bit, going back to God's got a purpose for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen? And uh, there's a problem. There's a sin and separation, mm -hmm. and so people are not doing their, uh, you know, they're not doing their purpose. Find all your purposes. You know, let's go back to, uh, reminds me back to uh, when I gave my life to the Lord. I was in God's permissive will for my life. I wasn't in God's perfect will, you know. So when I got reconnected with God during our separation, and we went to Bible school, that's how my wife was in, met a, a lady in Russia on a mission trip with TBN on a, on a trip, and she met some Texans over there, 
and one of those Texans invited us to come to uh, down to Crystal Beach down here to stay in their home for mm -hmm. a week. Yep. Remember that? Yeah. And uh, that's how we got all this connected. And and when we were separated, uh, God just put things together. When when we got back together, it was our anniversary. I don't remember. It was our twenty second wedding anniversary. And uh, that's when we went to Minneapolis and saw Tim's story and stuff. When we came back, Ken said, I have to go to Bible school. I have to, I have to obey God. And so we got down on our knees and we prayed. And, and we said, God, we're in, you know, this was in August. School yeah. started all over. Yes. We were 42 years old. Yeah, young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, so where in the United States do you want us to go to Bible school? There wasn't one available up in Minnesota where we lived. Um, I had already done the correspondence with Rayma. I was a Rayma graduate at that point, but he needed to go to Bible school. And so we prayed. We want a small school. We need to be able to work um, to go, you know, and, and we want it uh, taught by men and women who have walked with the Lord for years and walked in the Spirit for years. And we, we laid all those things down, no more than two years. And I mean, we laid all of them. And so the yeah. next day I was praying. Our plan. And that was on Sunday night. The next, the next morning we were praying. I was praying. And, and the Lord said, call Lee Brown in Orange, Texas. Please in heaven now. So he won't mind if we talk about him. A great man. A Love great it. man of God. Yeah. And uh, call Lee Brown in Orange, Texas. And I told Ken, and he said, well, that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> well, every single day <laughs> until Friday, uh, every single day the Lord would say, call Lee Brown in Orange, Texas. And so I said, Ken, what's it going to hurt? Call Lee Brown in Orange, Texas. See if he knows about, maybe he knows about a school. And he called Lee, and Lee said, uh, on Sunday night, God told me to start a Bible, Bible school. And he said, and people weren't signing up like I expected it to. And so he said, uh, on Sunday night, I prayed and I asked, Lord, send somebody from far away that needs a school. Well, Minnesota and Texas are a little <laughs> bit a of distance ways. away, and we needed that school. And so he was down there by September to start the Bible, Bible school. I, tr I stayed in Minnesota to keep working for a little while. I joined him actually Halloween of 92. But you know, Mary, twice in our lives we pretty much gave Everything we gave we everything had. twice. When I came down to Texas, I came by by myself and had a small U-Haul and mm -hmm. and uh, coming down to a land. It's kind of like in Genesis 12 with Abram. Get out of your country, you know. Leave your relatives. All these things. Get out and of your comfort zone. We have two zone. beautiful children, and now we got six grandchildren. And but we had to depart, mm -hmm. and uh, it was hard. Is but you know, following the the call of God in your life, and we we did that. We followed the call of God. On our life, and God did the great things uh, for us. We. Uh, he said, "If you be willing and obedient, obedient. you yeah. will eat the good of the land." But our children, you know, were grown up. You know, it's not that we were, you know, uh, they were, they were out of, they were living in Minneapolis, I believe, at the time, and mm -hmm. we were there in uh, three hours west of, of Minneapolis. And, uh, but we, you know, coming down here and then going to school, and, and then uh, three months prior to graduation of school, I said, well, Lord, what do you want us to do? And he said, I want you to work on your established ministry. And I said, well, who? And he gave us uh, Pastor Robert Dowdy down there in Galveston at Church Living God. And so we met with him and his wife, his first wife, Doris, at that time. And we sat down and had lunch with them and so forth and told him our, our vision, what the Lord had said to us. And he said, we've been waiting for you to come. And uh, sure enough, so we... Uh, that, that July of 94 is when we stepped out, went to uh, Church Living God, and uh, got involved with the church there, and, and uh, it was wonderful. And we were there for quite a few years. And we were there till 2007. Yeah, we were there a long time. And mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, I believe we're, we're loyal people. We, we uh, are faithful, and we like to get in and help people. Yeah. Amen. So God is uh, God will take you from where you are. He'll change your life. He'll make you a new creature. The Bible says uh, that we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away, and all things become new. So all this old life that we lived, it's in the past. Yeah. It's like uh, yeah. what's that lion? Uh, lion, you know, he slapped him in the the Lion King. Yeah, yeah. Lion King. He's, and he slapped <laughs> he him, him in the back of the uh, head. <laughs> what, what'd you do that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. 
So it just it's in the past. So quit living in the past. Go on. And let's let's start living Grow up. daily. Yeah. yeah. Let's live in let's live today from now. Let's live it for the Lord Jesus and yeah. let's follow him in every area of life. I, I I like how our pastor challenged us when he was talking to us about living in, with an eternal purpose. He said, how are you going to spend the next 24 hours? Oh, wow. How are you going to spend the next 24 wow. hours? Yeah. Are you going to ask the Lord what he would have you to do, or are you just going to do your own thing? Because we can waste time really good. You know, wasting time, in fact, I looked at the definition of sin. It talked about that. Wasting time is just like it's a sin because God's got plan and purpose for you. Yeah. If you're just wasting time, it's like we wasted 33 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people that get... Think about Tracy Harris uh, uh, at age five, just knowing the Lord yeah. and, and living his whole life. Yeah. Well, we never, for 33 years, we didn't do that. So you young folks, you know, give your life to the Lord yeah. and, and find out your call in life and press into it and get out there and, and get it done. Yeah. Amen. You know, wow. I, another thing uh, I just want to say, uh, we understand the gifts of the Spirit, the prophecy and tongues and prophecy, uh, <laughs> words and knowledge, things like that. There, there is, I, I believe when you get a prophetic word from somebody, when somebody prophesies to you what the Lord is saying, I believe that they are reading from your heavenly book, mm -hmm. uh, that they're getting words from their heavenly book, and you need to be willing and obedient to, and uh, understand right. that God's going to tell and, you. And I believe right now that God's speaking to somebody right now, that God is, God is just really touching your heart by watching this program. And uh, we're real, folks. I, I believe that with all my heart. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. You know, we need to live for the Lord. And, uh, but God's touching your heart right now. And just cry out to him. Uh, you're going, you might have got a bad report from the doctor or whatever, but, you know, just turn it to the Lord. Jesus is your healer. Yeah. Uh, he's the healer. He'll heal your body. He'll, he'll heal your mind. He'll take you out of depression. He'll take you out of all the, the junk of the world. And he'll, he'll put you in his kingdom and, and start living in the kingdom of God. Amen. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things to be added on to you. So believe that. And trust it. Amen. Say this with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Oh, I thank you right now. I thank you right now. In the now. name of Jesus. In the name I of Jesus. I call upon the name of the Lord. I call upon the name Lord, of the Lord. Lord, you said if I call upon Lord, your name. Lord, you said if I call upon your name. I would be saved. I would be so saved. So I call right now. So I call right now. I confess now. with my mouth. I confess the with Lord my mouth. Jesus, the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my God heart. That God raised him from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. And I am saved. And I am saved. I am free. I am free. I am set free from I'm set this day free forward. From this day forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we give you praise and glory now. Amen. How are they going to contact us, honey? Um, they're going to they're going to either go to the, our website, our ministry website is of United in His Purpose dot org. Dot org. Mm -hmm. United in His Purpose, not our purpose. Right, His Purpose. You, his purpose. Or right. you can go onto my teaching blog site, uh, mbostrom 2com And that is awesome. Again, go back and look at these programs. I'd be a blessing to you. Amen. Yeah, the programs are, you know. And, and I want to say that our program is Sunday.